Chapter 14. Carl. Carl smiled over at Elizabeth as they neared the town. Excitement radiated off her like rays of sunshine and had since she'd woken up this morning. She had carefully folded all her dresses into a bag to take with them just in case. He just hoped there would be a place to rent because he would hate to crush her spirits. When they entered the town, he led the wagon up and down the main road first, searching for any empty buildings or signs, but there were none. That left only two options, the bank or Mr. Brown. Because Mr. Brown owned the general store, he had his finger on everything that happened in town. If there was a space available, he would know about it. So Carl pulled the wagon up in front of the general store and jumped down. What are we doing here? Elizabeth asked. Did you need more items from the store? He smiled as he held out his hand. No, but Mr. Brown is a great resource in this town. He'll be able to tell us if there's any space for rent. Oh, okay. Though she didn't sound entirely convinced, Elizabeth followed him into the store. The smell of spices and dry goods filled his nose, and then the realization that Mr. Brown was not behind the counter like usual. He scanned the store, which was rather empty at this time of day, and spotted the older man in the back, talking to none other than Emma Cook. Good morning, Elizabeth, Mr. Baxter. You two have perfect timing, Emma said with a wide smile when she saw them. What do you mean? Elizabeth asked. Well, I was just telling Mr. Brown here about your dresses and how much the women of the town would enjoy them. And I was just telling Mrs. Cook that I've been looking to expand into a small space upstairs, but hadn't done it yet because I had nothing to fill the extra space up there with. I'll need to see your dresses, of course, but if they are as good as Mrs. Cook says, I'd like to discuss sharing the space with you. Really? Elizabeth's voice came out in a squeak, and Carl couldn't help but grin. Really, I know that you don't have startup money at the moment, but once you get settled, I'll expect rent payment and a cut of the profits, of course, but I think this could be good for both of us. Beside him, Carl felt Elizabeth stiffen. Surely she hadn't expected to keep all the profits, had she? This could be a great first step, he said softly to her. She nodded, reached into her bag, and unrolled the bundle of carefully wrapped dresses and fabrics. Mr. Brown examined each piece in turn, his sharp eyes lingering on the fine stitching and intricate lace. These are quite lovely, he said at last. I could see them selling very well if you are agreeable to the terms. That's fantastic, Elizabeth, Emma said, hugging her. I knew it would work out, and I'm going to be your very first client. But you already so, Elizabeth said. Not like you do, and there's another dance coming soon that I would love to have a new dress for. As the women chatted, Carl pulled Mr. Brown to the side to verify that he was doing this of his own free will, and not simply because of Emma's suggestion. Having grown up with the woman, he knew how persuasive she could be. Do you really think this could work? Her dresses? Mr. Brown shrugged. I am not a woman, but I believe if Mrs. Cook says there is a need, then she will eventually sell her creations. I cannot guarantee you how quickly it will happen, but I will keep the rent low for her. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for taking a chance on her. Mr. Brown looked back at the women. If this ends up working out, she'll be helping me just as much. Eventually this town will grow enough to need another store, and I'll need everything I can to remain competitive. This could be just the thing. He clapped Carl on the shoulder before walking back toward the women. If you have a dress you don't mind leaving here, we'll put it in the window. Then you can set up upstairs tomorrow after I move the current stuff out. Do you need help with that? Elizabeth asked. Perhaps I could help you and then set up the area today. That is, if you can spare me for a time? She turned her questioning eyes on Carl. His first instinct was to tell her he did need her. After all, helping around the farm was part of what he'd been looking for when he placed his ad. But he was the one encouraging her to do this, and he'd known she would need to spend some time in town to make a shop work. He couldn't very well tell her now that she had to leave with him. I can spare you today, but I do need to get back to work. Is there a time that would work for me to be back? I can bring her, 
Emma said. I have the wagon today since I'm working at the clinic, so I'll bring her home. The clinic? Elizabeth asked. Are you a nurse? Emma chuckled and smiled as she shook her head slightly. I guess some would say that, though I've had no formal training. My father is Doc Moore. Oh, I didn't know. You must have grown up learning then. Something like that. Emma's a great help to her father, Carl said, and then he nearly kicked himself when he saw Emma's eyes widen and realized he'd used her first name. It was hard getting used to her being married again, but deciding correcting himself would draw even more attention to the faux pas, he let it slide and turned to Elizabeth squeezing her hand. Are you fine riding back with Mrs. Cook? I am, thank you. Carl breathed a sigh of relief that Elizabeth hadn't seemed to notice his slip of the tongue as he headed back to the wagon. He should probably tell her about his history with Emma before too much longer. In fact, there was much more he wanted to say to her about everything, but it could wait for this evening when it was just the two of them.